the number of companies that are involved in deep learning has just exploded. Now this is a partial list, but the important thing is this. The partial list includes everybody. Every internet service provider, every major computing company, the type of applications for deep learning and to enhance the smartness of our applications, to enhance the greater insight that we can derive from large data is really craziness. Intelligent video analysis, surveillance will never be the same. Um, intelligent uh, video tagging, uh, image tagging, recognizing images, image search, voice, translation, the universal translator you guys saw earlier. Even companies who are platforms of deep learning so that other companies who are building smart applications could be bolted on top of their platform. I could just imagine applications like Twitter and Uber and all of these amazing applications, all now powered by deep learning. The recommendation engines of movies and Amazon are just going to go through a whole area, a whole new phase of renaissance. Applications are going to seem smarter than ever, all because of some of this work. And that's why the excitement all over the world. Deep learning is also sweeping the industries and sciences. There are so many research, researchers whose work has been transformed as a result of this discovery. It turns out that predicting cancer is about understanding the rate of growth of cancer cells, the splitting of cells, mitosis. Now, instead of having a very trained doctor looking at biopsies, you can now use deep learning to analyze the patterns by themselves and do an even better job. Discovery of drugs, designing of drugs, largely is about testing, well, of course, designing the drug, but testing it against the human body and deciding whether this particular design of a drug would be toxic. There are hundreds of thousands of chemicals that could be toxic to humans. How do you possibly take all of the permutations of your drug design and figure out whether it's going to be toxic to a human? Now, the researchers at Johann Kepler's University has been able to figure out a method by which they can use deep learning to predict whether certain types of drug designs without experimentation could be ruled out and determined to be toxic to humans. Groundbreaking, game-changing work was done at the University of Toronto to predict, to predict from your he human genome whether you're going to have a genetic disease or not. It turns out that we've already sequenced the human genome several years ago, 2003. It was discovered to be, in fact, very, very complicated, some three billion codes, if you will. We have 20,000 or so codes, genome codes in, our, in, our, in the human, tens of thousands, and many of those permutations happen, or combinations of permutations happen, and yet rare diseases show up. Some permutations turn into severe disease like autism. The researchers at the University of Toronto using deep learning studied this enormously complicated human genome code and trained it against per mutations that leads to a disease, mutations that don't lead to disease, all of their data set goes into this deep neural net and trained it to predict whether certain combinations and certain mutations will lead to a genetic disease. Groundbreaking work. The list just goes on and on and on. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Deep, deep learning and deep neural nets, the network designs are evolving. The architectures of the networks are, being, are evolving. And in fact, even the combination of networks are evolving. The type of applications, the things that you can teach a network to predict is evolving. The folks at Stanford, led by Fei-Fei Li's Artificial Intelligence Lab and researcher Andre Kaparthi, is doing some really, really amazing work. And in fact, we don't, uh, Mr. Mr. Human Reference, uh, and I was joking with him earlier, uh, someday, you know, like we, 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 today, the, 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 uh, the unit of pressure is Pascal. Um, uh, they're, they're, how many Newtons? How many Pascals? Someday there'll be how many Andres? Your network, how smart is it? How many Andres is it? 
Well, it turns out, <laughs> he, says, he, he told me just days after he was beaten, uh, the best network is now 1.5 Andres. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the Andre itself, Mr. Andre Karpathy. <laughs> okay. Now, Andre is doing some really amazing work. And uh, one, of, one of the works that he's doing is under, taking a look at an image and trying to figure out what is the story within the image. Studying the, com extracting combinations, multiple thing, objects out of it and try to figure out the relationship of it and translate basically images to text. Andre, why don't you tell us about your work? Right. So uh, we have developed a deep learning model that is capable of taking an image and describing it with a sentence. <clears throat> so this model is composed of two, uh, two, comp two neural network modules. So we take a convolutional neural network, which we know can see, and we take a recurrent neural network, which we know is very good at modeling sequences. In this case, sequences of words that make up a sentence. And then we take those two modules, and just as if we were playing with Legos, we join them together to form a single module a single neural network. And then these two modules, and this is a very natural thing to do, by the way, with neural networks, because all neural network modules speak the same language, the language of vectors of numbers. And so once we join these two modules together, the networks learn how to work together and adjust each other in order to perform best at some end task. In this case, the task of describing images with sentences. Now, Andre, before you show them, show them uh, your network uh, in, in action, uh, tell me, the, the, what is the network size? How would you describe the network size of, of the, the CNN, the network size of the RNN? <clears throat> right, there are, many, uh, there are several ways to quantify that, but we're looking at roughly, um, so the convolutional network is a VGG network in this case, and the recurrent network has roughly one-tenth of a size and maybe number of uh, connections. And how, how did you train this network? What is the data set? That you, now, of course, the CNN, the VGG network was already pre-trained, and it was pre-trained on on basically the ImageNet database. That's right. And then, and then um, uh, the uh, text recognition was probably some kind of a pre-trained network as well? Right, so all of these neural networks are based on some data. In this case, we need data of images and sentence descriptions. And in this case, again, Amazon Mechanical Turk was used to annotate images with sentence descriptions, and that becomes our training data to, um, in order to actually train the recurrent neural network part of it and the connection between the convolutional network and the recurrent network. And how big was the training set for you? It's approximately 100,000 images and 500,000 sentences. Uh -huh. And when you trained it, at the time that you trained it, how, how long ago did you do this anyways? Right, so the convolutional network takes approximately even two weeks or so to train on multiple GPUs, but that is pre-trained. Uh, then the recurrent neural network that we join with convolutional network, that takes on the order of uh, maybe one week on a GPU, or it can take several weeks, um, depending on the size of the model, but certainly multiple days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, well, let's take a look at this and see what it can do. Right, so here we, we're going to go through several example images. So in this case, we see an image, and this image goes through the neural network, and the neural network starts to sample words one at a time to describe this image. So in this case, the network thinks that this is a bird perched on the branch of a tree. Now, recognize, everybody, that earlier, when Mike was showing you the demonstration, he, he demonstrated cat, dog, koala. Now this is, if you would have used the same network, they would have come up bird. That's right. They would have come up bird, OK? But it didn't come up with just bird. It says this is a bird perched on a branch of a tree. Now imagine what you would have said. Imagine what you would have said about this, this particular image. Now let's take a look at a few other images. Right. What would you say about this image? Okay. Okay. So our network thinks that this is a large airplane sitting on top of a runway. Not bad, all by itself. Okay, let's take another one. What would you say about this image? Ask yourself what you would say about this image. A man riding a horse drawn carriage down a street. That's right. <laughs> I know, it just stomped about 90% of us, right? But this is obviously a very good answer. All right, next. What would you guys say about this one? Wait for it. OK. A boat is docked in a canal with a large building in the background. Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. What would you guys say about this one? I would have said Photoshop. <laughs> 
Okay, now we're starting to push the boundaries of the limits of this network. Right. Obviously, it doesn't, this network doesn't see too many examples of a fish flying. And that's one of the reasons for that. Okay, next. What would you guys say about this one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Now, propor proportional, proportionally, I would say it's not bad. Proportionally, I would say it's not bad. Apparently, apparently, Andre, your 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 uh, your network's not very good at age. <laughs> right. Yep. Okay, wait for this one, guys. What is this? Do you guys recognize the people? Two children going down a sled, maybe. Two politicians, maybe. <laughs> Terminator, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, the network is not aware of the identities of these people. But so I, but. I, think, I think the key point here, Andre, is you have some work to do. <laughs> All right, you guys. Andre Karpathy. <laughs> Fantastic. And so, as Andre said, one of the greatest challenges right now is teaching the networks. One of the greatest challenges is teaching the networks. And what we'd like to do is, we'd, of course, they're being taught they're being, these networks are being taught in the development of the frameworks, basically the tools, the environments, the networks themselves, and the configurators of these networks. These frameworks are being designed by the best researchers in the world in this field. And there are three large, three very popular frameworks. There's the CAFE framework, the Torch framework, and the Theano framework. These frameworks are incredibly powerful and very good to use, but they're hard to use, and they're, they were designed to be used uh, by the researchers themselves. We would like to democratize. We would like to democratize and make more available these platforms for almost everybody to be able to train networks. And so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to create essentially a framework of frameworks. This framework of frameworks would be accelerated by GPUs. Not only will it be accelerated by GPUs and would contain all of the best middleware that we have at the time, and all of the investment that you made on top of that, of course, will just continuously improve as we improve the middleware. It will continuously improve as we improve the GPUs. It would, it would be accelerated on one GPU. It would be accelerated on multiple GPUs. It will be accelerated on a, on a GPU that's off on the network. And it would be accelerated over time by the GPU that's in a cloud. Same framework. Same framework. Okay? We call this framework digits. Deep GPU training system, deep GPU training system. It's a deep GPU training system. It's for, designed for data scientists, and it allows you to train DNNs, deep neural networks. It also allows you to visualize it, so you just test to see if, if the network is doing what your intuition would suggest that it would be doing, and allows you to multi manage multiple sessions at one time. The UI is uh, web-based, and so uh, you'll be able to access it from anywhere, and uh, each panel allows, for example, you can process the data, you can configure your network, how deep, how wide, you can monitor its progress, and as I mentioned, you can visualize uh, the work that is going on at its time. Now, in order to package all of this stuff up and make it easy for data scientists all over the world, because right now, cobbling all of this stuff together is really, really hard, and you need you need, the deep, you need the deep learning scientists themselves. We've packaged all of this stuff together, created a framework of frameworks, accelerated with GPUs, and now we've also built a single little appliance, a single little appliance, we call it the Digits Dev Box. The Digits Dev Box is a simple little appliance. You take it out of the box, you plug it into the wall, it boots up into Linux, everything is pre-installed. It is the maximum amount of GPU performance that you can get out of a wall socket. You can't squeeze out one more flop, S flops. You can't squeeze out any more. And we've tested it, it's robust, we've configured it, we changed BIOSes, we tuned the memory, the thermal management system of this box it's just designed for you to take it out, plug it in, and know that we've pushed it to as far as we can push it. We've tried everything, and this is what we could achieve. 
Okay? And everything has been tested. It's, it's a nice little appliance. It's got the world's fastest GPU in it. It's got the world's most performance you get, get out of multiple GPUs. And of course, the framework has been tested with multiple GPUs. The results, we've been sharing it with some friends. We developed it initially for ourselves. And we've now discovered there's a lot of researchers and a lot of developers around the world who desperately would like to have something like this. We've shared it with some people, and the results, early results, have been fantastic. People are just blown away by its performance. Today, we're announcing that Digit's Def Box. This is a box that we like not to sell in high volumes. And the reason for that is because it was really de developed for developers. This is not a, a product to be used as a gaming box. It's not a product to be used as a, a, you know, a general purpose computer. It only comes with Linux. It only comes with these four GPUs. It only comes in one configuration. It only comes with no instruction manuals. And, and all you have to do, uh, <laughs> but it does, come, it does come with the contact of a very important friend that you'll have at NVIDIA to work with you to advance your research. And so this isn't something that we hope to sell a whole lot of, but this is something that we built so that researchers like yourself can very, very easily and very, very quickly get up to speed on deep learning and start doing real meaningful work, which is ultimately your goal. Your goal isn't to do plumbing and be an electrician uh, to build these, rig these super computing boxes uh, for yourself. It's available. You should, have, you should uh, come to our website. All you do to do, do a search, or you can come un under developers, uh, D NVIDIA Digits Dev Box. We're building them uh, one at a time. And uh, this is not a mass production platform, as we mentioned. And so uh, come to the website, fill in, fill in order, let us know why you're going to use it, and then we'll, tr we'll try to prioritize it as quickly as we can. And we should be able to start shipping it in May. $15,000. It's, of course, um, priced at a level that, that hopefully all researchers can afford. And, um, uh, and, uh, and like I said, it's not meant to be a business. It's meant to help you. OK? Digits, DevBox. <laughs> but see, that's just the beginning. 